All right, welcome back to Coffee Cafe. We are on the very last day here, the June 28th Friday, okay? The last thing that we did was we paid Atlas Coffee Importers. We received a 1% discount, okay? So let's continue on. All right, so then here, Albert submits another order for Super A Market. Super A Market wants to purchase 65 pounds of regular coffee and 50 pounds of the Supreme Coffee. Uh, order number 110, okay? So we're going to go, since it's just an order, we're going to go down to our sales order, okay? And let's see, we'll copy this one, Super A Market, okay? Wait, did Super A Market want coffee mugs? Let's see. Yes, 18 ceramic coffee mugs. Okay, so here. Find an empty one. So here you go. Super A Market. This is, today's date is the 28th. Okay. We have sales order number 110. Okay. He wants... 65 and 50, 65 pounds of regular coffee, 50 pounds of the Supreme Coffee, and 18 coffee mugs. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate this. Okay. Okay, bringing us a grand total to be $533.17. Okay, let's see. $533.17. Okay, awesome. So we entered in the sales order for that. So next here is we have our daily sales. So let's go ahead and plug in our daily sales. And that was the end of... Okay, so here we reached the bottom portion of the... Uh, page 17 i can tell you right now that this is definitely not enough space for all the sales and stuff but this is way too much space for a uh to squeeze in a transaction here so i'm going to draw a line here so then no one can put any transaction in between okay all right so that means we're going to start our sales on page 19 of the journal, okay, and so on and so forth. So let's start from the very beginning. We got checking, then we got to record all of the sales here, okay, and we're also going to record the um, cost of goods sold as well, okay, for the 28th. Okay, so 628. My checking is going to be an equal sum. So I can uh, not have to check the debits and credits. Okay. So the first one for the medium regular coffee. We have sold 240 cups for $477.60. Okay. We have sold 200 of the large uh, regular coffee for $598. We sold 245 medium supreme coffees for $610.05. And then we have um, sold 201 cups of the large supreme coffee for $701.49. Okay. And then we got charged, uh, I mean, ceramic coffee mugs. We sold five of them for $34.95. Then we have sales tax for $199.82, giving us a grand total of $2,621.91. Yeah, $26.21.91. $26.21.91. Perfect. Okay. And then now we need to... Deposit the money into our checking account for the twenty six twenty one ninety one. Okay, so in store sales for twenty six twenty one ninety one, and today is the twenty eighth. 
And this is deposit number 13. And we're going to add together this plus the payment we received from Great Restaurant. Right? Give us a grand total of $3,172.70 deposit. Okay? Then, now that we have everything here, we're going to go ahead and plug our numbers into our ledger to update our checking account. Okay? So, first things first is going to your checking account. Okay, so checking. Okay. So today's the 28th for the in-store sales. We are on General Journal page 19, the new one now. Okay, for 26.21.91. Okay, and that's going to increase your checking account to a total of $8,805.86. Okay. Now we're going to update all of our sales here. Okay. Starting with the first one, which is the sales for the... Um, we could do the ceramic coffee mugs first. So ceramic coffee mugs. Right, today's the 28th. We sold five of them, I believe. Let's see. Okay, we sold five of them for $34.95. Jenna Journal 19 for $34.95. Okay, so $34.95. And that's going to give me a grand total of $15.43.30. Then the ceramic, I'm sorry, then the medium or regular coffee. How many cups did we sell on the 28th? Let's see, we sold 240 cups. Okay, General Journal, page 19, for the $477.60. All right. And that's going to bring your total ending balance to be $4,276.51. Okay. Then let's see for the sales for the large regular coffees. Let's see. We sold 200 of them. Jenna Journal 19 for a total of $598 even. And that gave me a grand total of $5,262.40. Okay. Next one is going to be our medium supreme coffees. We sold 245 cups. General Journal 19 for a total of $610.05. Okay, which will bring us a grand total of $5,438.16. Okay. Then our large Supreme Coffees is going to give us two hundred and one cups. We sold two hundred and one cups. General Journal page nineteen. For a total of seven hundred and one dollars and forty nine cents. Seven seven oh one forty nine. Okay. And that's gonna give me a grand total of six thousand fifty five dollars and fifteen cents. Okay. 
We did the ceramics coffee mugs already. So last but not least, we need to do the sales tax. So liabilities, in-store sales right here, perfect. Twenty eight for in store sales. General Journal nineteen for that one hundred and ninety nine dollars and eighty seven cents. Okay, and that's going to give me a grand total sales tax to be. $1,636.64. Okay. So now that I finished my journal, I finished my ledger, I need to do my cost of goods sold, so the inventory worksheet. Okay. So let's figure out how many pounds we used for the in-store sales. So in-store, we used 40 and a half pounds of regular coffee and 41 pounds of the Supreme Coffee. So 40 and a half and 41 pounds. Okay. So here we are, regular coffee. Today is the 27, and we used 40.5 pounds. Okay. And my current average cost per item is 1.636042. Okay. And this is going to give me a total cost of goods sold to be. $66.26. Okay. So let's go ahead and update my inventory, right? We started out with uh, 96 pounds. We used 40 and a half, which will give me... That makes no sense. How is that possible? We used 40 and a half pounds. Oh, wait. I think I know why. Uh... There you go, 55 and a half pounds, okay? And then we used up 66.26, which will give me a remainder of $90.80 left, bringing my cost per item to be 6.36036, so dropped by quite a few uh, thousands of pennies here. So we're at five, 55 and a half pounds at $90.80. Our total cost of goods sold was $66.26. Okay. For my Supreme Coffee, we sold 41 pounds. So let's see what is here. Okay. We have to split our inventory, right? Because I got 16 remaining in my first batch. And then I need to dip into my second batch here. So I'm going to use 16 at $1.85, which is, or in this case, not $1.85, $1.815. Okay, three, five, seven, which is going to give me a total of $29.05. Okay, so that's the first thing I got to do here is I have 16 remaining. I need to know what 41 minus 16 is, which is 25. And that will give me a total of 41 pounds. And I'm going to highlight that so we know it's a calculation. Okay. So this one is currently at that 1.8157. Okay. Right, and this is going to give me that twenty nine oh five. Okay, so I can clear out this batch of inventory right now. So there's zero left remaining. Okay, then I have to, I have to sell how many twenty five, twenty five from my hundred and twenty five pounds here. So twenty five dollar twenty five pounds at a dollar and eighty nine cents each. 
Okay, so I need to figure out that much. Okay, so, <coughs> so what is 25 pounds at a dollar 89? Excuse me, this is gonna give me forty-seven dollars and twenty-five cents each. Uh, twenty-five cents. So add these two up total, you're gonna get seventy-six dollars and thirty cents for selling for using forty-one pounds of recycling coffee. So I need to update my inventory real quick. Okay, forty-seven twenty-five. So this right here is two thirty six twenty five. Okay. And uh, this went from one twenty five to a hundred. Okay. And uh, let's see, we sold forty seven twenty five. Okay, I think it was 47, not 46. Okay, so 236.25 minus 47.25 will give me 189, 47.25. Yes, okay. So you should have $189 left in your uh, Supreme Coffee, and here you have a total for using 41 pounds is 76.30. So I'm gonna record that real quick. 76.30. And then for my regular coffee, it was a total of $66.26. Sixty-six twenty-six. Okay, and now we need to update our ledgers to reflect the calculations that we just sold here. <coughs> okay, starting with our cost of goods sold. We used 40 and a half pounds of regular coffee, General 19, for $66.26. So that should have given me a grand total of $1,127.26. And I end up using 41 pounds of Supreme Coffee. General Journal 6, General Journal 19 for 76.25. Or no, six. Forty-seven twenty-five. No, I was right. Seventy-six thirty. Okay. And that gave me a grand total of eleven ninety-two fifty-six. Okay. So let's go update my coffees here. Okay, starting with. My regular coffee. Okay, regular coffee. We used forty and a half pounds of regular coffee, General Journal nineteen, for um, sixty six dollars and twenty six cents, which gave me a total of. 90 and 80 cents, which is true in my inventory worksheet. Okay. 
then we end up using forty one pounds of Supreme Coffee General Journal nineteen for seventy six thirty, which reduced my account to a hundred and eighty nine, which that is true, right? Because it's there's a hundred units left, a hundred pounds left at a dollar eighty nine, which is a hundred and eighty nine dollars. Okay, good. So let's see what is next. Okay. So then now it says we are going to pay Irene, Tim, and Albert their paychecks. Okay. Starting with the first one, here is Irene's W-4 form. Okay. It's their address. Okay, she filed as a single or married filing separately. Okay, right? And this is what we have information on her, right? She says that extra with extra income. She has zero extra income. She has X zero withholdings and zero um, dependents. Okay. So we're going to calculate Irene's uh, federal income tax withholdings at the highest bracket for a single person filing, right? No holding, no withholdings, no extra um, deductions or anything like that, right? And we already said that we are not offering her any additional benefits. So no Social Security, no, um, I'm sorry. No 401k plan, no extra benefits, so no um, health care or anything like that, right? We can only calculate the basic federal taxes and state taxes that we are obligated to have to pay for, okay? Starting with the first one, so this is her timesheet here, okay? So remember, she started working for us on Friday June 14, okay? So she clocked in her first eight hours here from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then she has uh, Thursdays and Wednesdays off, okay? So here's her uh, time sheet here. We said that the payroll period ended on Sunday the 23rd, okay? So here she clocked in for uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So the first week she did, she claimed 24 hours, Second week, she did Monday, she did Tuesday, and then she, again, we have her off on Wednesdays and Thursdays, then she came in and clocked in on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So in this case, she clocked in 40 hours uh, for the second week, and then uh, 24 hours for the first week, okay? So we're going to combine those two together to get a grand total here of 64 hours, okay? So let's go ahead and... Um, go to her section in the employee section. So, okay, we're going to go to the subsidiary ledger, and we're going to click on employees. Okay, so for Irene Jameson, right, she's going to earn $12.50 per hour. She claimed a total of 40 hours the second week and 24 hours the first week for a total of 64 hours. So her total gross pay is going to be a total of $800, okay? So let's go ahead and use this table to figure out the rest of everything that she needs here. So again, her gross earnings is $800. Marital status, right? She's claiming herself as a single uh, woman, right? Total withholdings, we said zero, okay? Therefore, withholdings amount, right? So if you remember that table, so if you go to the circular E right here, there should be a table above here to tell you for every withholding, how much is each withholding. In this case, she doesn't have any withholdings, so we do not need to calculate anything here. Um, and it's based on the payroll period. So if she's if we're paying her every bi-weekly, she's supposed to get $165 per withholding. 
So in this case, if she claims zero withholdings, then she's going to get zero dollars. So amount to withhold is zero dollars. Okay. So then let's go ahead and calculate what her total amount is going to be. Okay. So here. So the uh, withholding amount, right, we said was zero because it's um, 165 times zero, right, which is zero. So the, um, the adjusted amount to withhold is going to be 800 minus the withholding, which is $800. So let's go ahead and use the circular E table to find out which table or which line uh, percentage um, that she belongs to, okay? So using the circular E table, so here I've already, um, I've already selected the correct one for you guys, okay? This is the single table for a biweekly payroll, okay? So if she's earned $800, right, she's definitely earned more than zero, definitely earned more than 146, definitely earned more than 500 and. 26, but earns less than $1,689. So therefore, <coughs> she belongs to this bracket right here, where, where uh, she's going to be subjected to $38 from the, from the government tax at no matter how much money she makes. She's going to get charged 12% for every dollar over that she's earned over $526. So this $526, if you remember, this is the amount of money that the government lets you keep without any taxes on it, okay? So there you go. This is the uh, line that she's going to be under. She's going to be taxed at 20 at 12%, okay? So let's go ahead and calculate this, okay? She's got five. She gets to keep $526. So let's go ahead and calculate the total amount over. So in this case, 800 minus 526 is going to leave $274 left over, right? This amount over is going to be subjected to be taxed at a 12%. Um, it's going to be taxed at 12%. So in this case, I'm going to multiply 12%. And that's going to give me... $32.88, okay? She also gets to be, um, she also gets the amount to withhold to be a total of, I think it was $38. Let's see, let's check that table again. So she belongs to this row right here. She's going to be subjected to be taxed $38 regardless of amount of money she earns. So in grand total, her total FITW is going to be $70.88, okay? Because she's single, has no children, not claiming anything, no extra deductions, no nothing, we're going to tax her at the highest percentage, which is 12%, um, at the highest amount because there's nothing to withhold. So that means she's going to be subjected to $70.88 worth of federal income tax, okay? So once again, gross pay for Irene is that $800, okay? First number we calculated was the federal income tax withholdings, which we found to be a total of $70.88. Okay, now I need to figure out what her uh, OSA, OASDI is, which is her social security. Social Security is going to be 6.2% of her gross wages, so 2%, oops, 2%, so 6.2 of $800 is going to be $49.46, okay, and then her uh, Medicare. So again, this is FICA, Federal Insurance Contribution Act. This is a federal obligation that must be um, taken out of an individual's paycheck, okay, to support when they retire. So it's going to be based off of gross earnings, okay, 
multiplied by 1.45%. Okay. So she gets subjected to $11.60 worth of Medicare. So net pay is going to be 800 minus the federal income tax withholdings minus the Social Security minus the Medicare, which is going to be, we're going to be issuing her a check for $667.92. Okay. Right. PR is going to be which journal we're going to be writing her check on, and we're going to issue her her check number and what her check amount is, which is going to be for $667.92, okay? So first things first is how are we going to journalize her uh, payment for calculating Irene's paycheck, okay? First, we're going to recognize is what kind of expense are we going to be issuing her? She is a salary earn. She's a wage earner. So she's going to be under payroll expenses. Let's see. She's going to be salaries and wages expense, 6810. 6810, okay? Which is going to be her total gross earnings, which is $800. Okay, that's how much she earned. 64, 64 hours for $12.50 yielded $800, okay? Now we need to subtract all of the taxes that we calculated for her. So all the federal taxes that she is obligated to have to pay out from her paycheck. So the first one we did was federal, in, uh, federal income tax withholdings. So let's take a look. Now in this case... When we calculate all of these federal taxes, right, what we're doing is we're withholding it from her paycheck, meaning that we, it is our responsibility that to pay the federal government for them. So in this case, what we're doing is we're creating a liability because that's the money that, that um, Irene is giving me to give to the government. So therefore, that money is not my money. It's money that I owe the federal government. So in this case, it becomes a liability, okay? So let's see what the first one is. Employee FITW payable, 24,030. Then I also had employee Social Security, which is 24,040, and employee Medicare payable, which is 2450, okay? So we got... Employee, FITW payable, okay? We got employee, Social Security payable, okay? And we have employee, Medicare payable. And last but not least, we're going to cut her a check <coughs> for the amount that we owe. So 24030, 24340, 24440, 24440, 24440, 24440, 24440, 24440, 24440, 24440, and the amount of um, Medicare was $11.60. So therefore, what is her grand total that she is going to be receiving from us? Okay, you can do your total debits minus your credits here. And it should be for $667.92. Okay, 6692 is her paycheck. Okay. So let's go ahead and cut her a check for 66792. Today's the 28th. 
She's going to receive um, check number 1530. Okay. For 66792. To whom? Irene Jameson. Spelled Jameson wrong. Jameson. Okay. For what? I'm going to go ahead and say three check. So in this case, right, I wrote to her check number 1530, okay, and in this case, it's going to be for the grand total, so Irene Jameson, right, um, this is her paycheck, paycheck number... 1530 okay it's up to you if you want to put how many hours she worked in this case it doesn't matter as long as you are referring that you wrote Irene Jameson a, <coughs> a check for her paycheck okay all right so now let's go ahead and update our ledger accounts to reflect all of those numbers okay Starting with salaries and wages payable, or expense, excuse me. Because that was the expense that we had to incur for the month of June to pay Irene for her, um, for her work. So here you go, salaries and wages expense. Okay, so we have the 28. Irene Jameson. Okay, General Journal, page 19, for a total of $800, right? That was her total amount that she earned, okay? okay. Now we have to go through all the liabilities because, right, she had to pay into her Federal Income Tax Withholding, Social Security, and Medicare. So here's payroll um, liabilities, no salaries and wages uh, payable, commissions payable, employee FITW payable. So in this case, 28, Irene. Okay. General Journal, page 19, for a total of $70.88 for her federal insurance, I'm sorry, federal in income tax withholdings, okay? Next one is Social Security. So again, Irene, General Journal 19, for a total of Okay, for her social security, Irene, she's paid into, uh, actually, wait, this is for Medicare, Medicare for $11.60, okay, hold on, 40 4960 is the first one. 4960 and then 1160. Yeah, 1160. Okay. And then last but not least, we got to update the checking because we wrote Irene a check. Okay. So here. 28, you could say Irene paycheck number 1530. And it's the 19, and we paid her $667.92.
Okay. And of course, that means that's going to decrease by $8,137.94. Okay. So that's just calculating Irene's portion of her check. This is what her responsibilities were to pay in for working for us as a company, right? These are the taxes that she is subjected to pay into. Now, as a company who's in employing her, we have to also pay taxes for having an employee. So in this case, we need to look at employer taxes, okay? So let's take a look down here, okay? So that was the um, employee section. Now we need to look at company section, okay? So for the gross pay, we know for a fact that she earned $800, right? We know that OASDI, which is also known as Social Security, was a total of $49.90, and her Medicare is going to be $11.60. So remember, a company is responsible to also match the individual FICA, the Federal Insurance Contribution Act. Okay, they have to match them 100%. So in this case, um, if Irene put in $49.60 of Social Security, we match them 100% with $49.60 as well. Okay. Now, FUDA. FUDA is the Federal Unemployment Tax Act. Okay. This is an obligation for us to pay into someone, to someone in case they lose their job. It's the unemployment so in this case, this is supposed to be 6% of gross pay. So 6% of gross pay, right? And that's going to give us a total of $48, okay? State, right, because we're a new business in the state of Nevada, we are subjected to have to pay into 3% of uh, unemployment. So in this case, 3% of gross earnings. So 3% of $800 is going to give us $24, okay? And of course, we're also going to cover and protect um, Irene in case she gets injured on the job, right? She might burn her hand on coffee. She might, you know, slam her finger into the cash register. We don't know, but we have to be able to um, ensure our employees that we protect them, right? And it also depends on the state that you are uh, doing business in, right? Some states require you to have a workers' compensation program for your employees, especially depending on what kind of job labor the job is. If it's super labor intensive and the, the, there's a higher risk of um, injury, then you should have definitely a higher percentage for the workers' compensation. But in this case, right, we said it can range depending on what the job labor intensity is, right? Now, in this case, we're just a regular coffee shop. The most that we'll get is maybe a third-degree burn or something like that or, you know, accidentally slamming um, fingers in doors or things like that or, you know, straining, pulling a muscle, something, something very small or very minor. It's not as labor intensive as it is if you were to do, um, you know, something like construction, right? where you can sever a, um, a hand or something, right? So in this case, we're, our percentage is going to be 1.36%. So it's going to be uh, based off of gross earnings. So in this case, 1.36% of $800 is going to be 10. Let me do that again. Is going to give us... $10.88 worth of workers' compensation. Okay. So let's go ahead and tally up our total liabilities. Okay. All right. So for having Irene as an employee, we have to be subjected to pay an additional $144.08 just to have Irene as an employee. So not only do we have to pay her 
for her um, earnings, which was a total of $800, plus $144 just to um, protect her as an employee and have and just responsibility for having her as an employee. Okay. So there you go. Now we need to go ahead and update our journal here. Now, once again, this is going to be considered another expense, right? Based off of Irene's earnings. So let's take a look. Since it's an expense to the company, right? It's going to be definitely under payroll. And then let's see. It's not a commissions expense, but it definitely is a payroll tax expense. Okay, so $68.30. Payroll tax expense, right? These are the taxes that we are subjected to pay for Irene for being an employee. Okay, so this is payroll tax expense. And her the total amount was that one forty four oh eight, right? So I'm gonna do equal sum. And we're going to list out all of the items that we are subjected to have to pay for her. Okay. Starting with the first one, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the list of liabilities because again, when we're talking about Federal um, Insurance Contribution Act, FICA for short, who do we owe? We're not paying ourselves for this. We're paying into her Social Security and Medicare. So, therefore, we owe money to the government, right? So, therefore, it becomes a liability. We also have to pay federal unemployment tax. So, that's going to go to the federal government. We also have to pay state unemployment tax, which is a state. So, we have to pay the state of Nevada. And on top of that, workers' comp is going to be based on, again, an agency that helps you deal with worker compensation. So we might have a vendor available for that. Okay. So let's take a look at my liabilities again. So we have company FICA, company FUDA, company SUDA, and workers' compensation payable. Okay, starting on 2460. Okay. 2460. Company FICA, FUDA, SUDA, and workers' compensation. Okay. So we're going to go to uh, my journal here and we're going to list out all of them. So, starting with the first one, we got company FICA payable. Okay. Then we got company. FUDA, payable, we have um, company state unemployment, payable, and we have workers compensation, payable. So again, that was 24060, 24070, 24080, 24090. Okay. So again, the FICA was a combination, right? FICA is Social Security and Medicare combined. So with whatever 4960 plus 1160 is going to be, it is going to be $61.20. We have FUDA to be $48. We have SUDA to be half of that, which is $24. And then we have workers' compensation to be $10.88. Okay. So therefore, $144.08 is going to be her payroll tax expenses. Okay. All right, so here's your journal, and it's going to be based on having in Irene. So based on Irene's, oh, actually, I'm going to change that again. Irene's payroll tax liabilities. Okay. All right, 
This is our responsibility that we have to pay extra for having Irie be an employee. So let's go ahead and plug our numbers into our ledger to update our uh, numbers there. Update our liabilities. So starting with expenses because it's a payroll tax expense. Here we are, payroll tax expenses. I am going to go ahead and put Irene one more time. <coughs> 19 still. Okay, yeah, we're still on the page 19. And the grand total was $144.08 for Irene. So then now let's go ahead and put in all the liabilities that we owe the government. Okay. So starting with company FICA. Right. And of course you can separate it if you want to. Right. Saying Irene. Irene. Social is uh, forty nine sixty plus Medicare, which was for eleven dollars and sixty cents, right? Forty nine, forty nine, fifty, forty nine, sixty plus eleven, sixty. Okay, which is going to give you a grand total here. Post-reference still on the 19 to give you a grand total credit of $61.20. Okay. Then her FUDA, her federal unemployment. I'm going to put Irene again because it's based on <coughs> Irene's earnings, uh, which is for $48. Okay. <coughs> Now we have to do state unemployment for Irene, 19 for $24 because it's half of federal in this case, right? Because uh, one six of rent, the other one is 3% for $24. And then last but not least, workers' compensation. General Journal 19 for $10.88. Okay. okay. Right. And that's it for Irene because we did the journal, the ledger, and the subsidiary ledger, right? We did Irene's section of the subsidiary ledger, which would be under employees. Okay. So that was the very first employee. So the next employee I have to do here is going to be Mr. Tim. So if you remember Mr. Tim Harrison, we hired Tim Harrison, right, to be our bartista, right? And he's going to be paid as a salary earner, okay? Since he is going to get paid as a salary-based earnings, right? Let's see here. Tim, Tim Harrison, right? So Tim files his W-4 form as a single status, no extra income or withholdings, okay, and claimed zero dependents, okay? Tim only um, called in sick once on Saturday, uh, June 15th, okay? So remember, we hired him 
the ne- to, to train the very next day that we hired him. Okay, and he's working on a salary. So do how many hour does it matter how many hours he earns? No, because at the end of the day, if he's salary based, he gets to he as long as he um works the day, it doesn't matter because he's gonna get the same paycheck amount every single time. Because he's salary based earnings. So let's go ahead and take a look at um the employee section. Okay. So we've already marked here that Mr. Tim Harrison, right, is going to get paid $1,500 per paycheck. So therefore, how many hours does he earn? It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, he's still going to get a $1,500 paycheck. Okay? Or that's a, that's the amount that he's supposed to get, right, or earn. And then, of course, he's going to be subjected to pay for all of those federal taxes. So once again, he earns $1,500 per paycheck. He filed as a single status. He has zero withholding. So therefore, it is the same thing, right? Uh, Zero times 165 means zero. So that means he's going to be withheld zero dollars. Okay. So that means he's subjected to have to ha- um that all fifteen hundred dollars that he earns is going to be subjected to federal taxes. So let's go ahead and see which bracket he belongs to now. Okay. So circular E table. Okay. This doesn't matter whether you're salary or hourly, right? It's based on how much you earn on a biweekly uh pay period. Right, so every paycheck is uh he gets uh to get paid fifteen hundred dollars per paycheck, and he is um under single status. So let's see, he's definitely earned fifteen hundred dollars. So therefore, definitely more than five hundred and twenty six dollars, but definitely less than sixteen eighty nine. So therefore, let's see, he falls under the same bracket as Irene, okay? Where he's going to be subjected to $38 worth of tax and is going to be taxed at 12% and is going to get $526 to himself, right? The government lets to keep him $526. So in this case, the same exact bracket as Irene. So let's go ahead and calculate this. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So we go to the um, employee, right? So if he gets to keep 500 and $526, $526, I think. Let me see. Let's go back to the table. $526. Yes, five. he gets to keep $526. Okay. That means, let's see. Let's do that calculation again. He gets to keep $526. So, therefore, he, that he's going to make earn $974 over. So, therefore, he's going to get taxed. Okay, and that 12% is going to be, that does not look right. Let's do that again. Equal round 12%. No, 12% is 12%. There. 12%, comma, 2. So he's going to be taxed at $116.88. Plus, he gets to, he has, uh, he's going to be subjected to pay $38, right? Because that's the bracket he belongs to. So therefore, he has to pay 
$38 to the federal government regardless for the amount that he earns. So that means he's going to get a total of $116 plus $38. Oh, wait, sorry. $38. Okay, so therefore he's going to get taxed at $154.88. Okay. That's a lot of taxes, but that's what I mean. By the more money you make, the more taxes you gotta pay. But he got lucky. He didn't go he didn't go up the, the next bracket percentage, right? So for his gross earnings of fifteen hundred dollars, we found out that his FITW is a total of a hundred and fifty four dollars and eighty eight cents. So now we need to calculate his social security. Okay? Based off of his gross earnings. Right, which is 6.2%, okay, which is going to be $93. Okay, and then Medicare is going to be Gross earnings times 1.45%, which is going to be $21.75. So therefore, net pay is going to be $1,500 minus $154.88 minus Social Security minus Medicare will mean he's going to be walking away with twelve. dollars uh, Twelve hundred and thirty dollars and thirty-seven cents. Okay. So once again, let's go ahead and journalize this um, here. Okay. So same exact as above, right? But this time we have to take into consideration that it's not Irene's earnings anymore. This is for Tim. Okay. And we have to cut him a check. <clears throat> okay, so six nine six twenty eight. All right. So again, he was for um federal income tax withholdings was one fifty four eighty eight. Social Security was $93 even. Oops, $93 even. And then, of course, his... Um, wait, this isn't right. This is supposed to be the $1,500. Okay. And then I saw uh, Medicare is $21.75. So, therefore, his total check that he's going to earn... is 123037. Okay? <clears throat> and then of course we got to write him a check. Okay? For 123037. To whom? Tim Harrison. Okay? And what for? A check. Okay? For 123037. So, you can go ahead and put in Tim Harrison, paycheck, check number 1531. Okay. And now, we need to go ahead and update my ledger. But, you know, um, so that, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So let's start with all of the, the um, salaries and wages expense, right? Because he's a salary earner, right? So therefore, you could go ahead and put here for the 28th that this is Tim. Okay. And he's going to get paid $1,500 per paycheck. 
So therefore, there should be a total weight. Hold on. I'm in Suda. Okay, so sorry. Go back. We need to be in expenses. So there you go. Tim. Okay. Uh, 19 for $1,500. And that's going to give you a grand total of 2300 okay and then you could go to all the liabilities okay starting with federal income tax withholdings right for Tim which he subjected to $154.88. So therefore, total federal taxes, federal income taxes is going to be $225.76. Okay. Then we have... Um, Social Security, he's going to pay $93. So therefore, total is going to be $142.60. Okay. And then... Total amount of Medicare is going to be $21.75 giving them a grand total of $33.35. Okay. And then we need to go to checking because you just cut another check. Okay, this is for Tim. Okay, check. Check number... Fifteen thirty one nineteen for a total of one thousand two hundred and thirty dollars and thirty seven cents. So therefore, you should have now dropped to six thousand nine hundred and seven dollars and fifty seven cents. Okay. All right. So now that we calculated the payroll taxes for Tim or the employee's responsibility for their check, right? We need to also record the responsibilities as a company, right? We need to put in all of our payroll taxes that we have to pay for Tim for being an employee for us, okay? So here we go, starting on the new page here. This is the 28th. So we're going to have payroll taxes. So go to your um, subsidiary ledger, and we're going to figure out Tim's payroll taxes. Okay, so again, based on gross earnings of $1,500, we know that um, Social Security was $93 plus Medicare was $21.75. FUDA. Once again, is 6% of gross earnings, comma 2, so that's $90, okay? And we know that SUDA is going to be 3%, which is $45, and then workers' compensation, right, would be $20.40. So total liabilities is going to be 
$270.15 worth of payable tax liabilities. Okay, $270.15. So then, let's go ahead and journalize that. Okay, starting with the first one, federal income tax or federal insurance contribution act, right? Social security was $93 plus $21.75 for uh, Medicare will be $114.75. Okay. Then we had $90 for FUDA, $45 for SUDA, and then um, $20.40 for workers' compensation. 20, or is it 2040? Yeah, 2040 for workers' compensation. Okay, giving you a grand total of 270.15. Okay. And once again, we're going to go ahead and put in here uh, I, um, Tim's Payroll tax liabilities. Okay. So, once again, we need to um, do the ledger to update all the liabilities that we owe for having Tim as an employee. Okay. Going to the um, expenses here. Right, the payable taxes that we paid for Tim. Okay, so we're on general drill 20 now for 270.15. So that will give you a grand total of 414.23. Okay, then we're going to go to the liabilities. Okay, starting with um, FICA, right, it's up to you if you want to do uh, Tim Social is $93, okay, plus um, Medicare was twenty one seventy five. Okay. Oh, we're on general drill twenty. Whoops, general drill twenty, which was for a total of one fourteen seventy five. Okay, let's let's calculate that. What was it? Ninety three plus uh, twenty one seventy five. Yep, one fourteen seventy five. So therefore, grand total is one seventy five ninety five. Okay. We got FUDA to be ninety dollars for Tim. Okay, so 90 plus 48 is going to get you 138, okay, plus $45 for Tim, okay, so 45 plus 24 is going to give you 69, and then last but not least, workers' compensation, for Tim was for a total of twenty dollars and forty cents. So twenty forty plus ten eighty eight is gonna give you thirty one twenty eight. Okay, thirty one twenty eight. Okay, and that is for Tim. Okay. So let's see what's next. 
we have to pay for Albert now. So Albert, right, he's based on 40% of commission. So if you remember, we've already kept track of that, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at how much we owe um, Albert that for the commissions. So here, for the first section, for the first payroll period, he's earned a total of $560.66 worth of, of commissions. So five sixty sixty six, and that's the amount of paycheck I'm gonna write to him. Okay. Now, why is uh, Albert only going to get paid five hundred and sixty dollars and sixty six cents? Okay, because he's an independent contractor, right? We only hired him for him to be a sales representative to us. He gets to come into the job whenever he feels like it. He gets to do whatever he wants because he's an independent contractor. So therefore, I have no responsibility to have to pay into his Social Security, Medicare, or any federal state taxes. So that means I just pay him as a mere expense for whatever job that he's has done for me, which is sell the coffee. So in this case, right, if he's a commission-based earner, then what are we going to put him as? He's going to be earning us as commissions expense, okay? So commissions expense, yes, I know it's under payroll, but that's because, you know, in this case, we're paying as if he's like an employee, but not really, okay? Because he's a, in a, he, he works for us, but he's not under the payroll system, but it's fine. Um, in this case, it's going to be under commissions expense, so 6820. Okay, for our six twenty eight commissions expense sixty eight twenty for a total of five hundred and sixty dollars and sixty six cents because that is what I calculated his forty percent um commissions to be. Okay. So five hundred sixty dollars and sixty six cents is his total commissions. So that means I'm gonna be cutting him a check for that exact amount. Okay. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut him a check, and he's gonna be check number. Uh, 532, okay, for $560.66 to, um, Albert Allen. What for? Commissions. Okay. So, he's getting check number 1532. Right, and I'll go ahead and put his name, Albert Allen, commissions, check number 1532. Okay, so once again, I need to go to my ledger to update the commissions expense, but also to ultimately update the checking account. So here's commission's expense. Okay. 40% of total sales. It's the 20th and he gets $560.66. And that is exactly how much we are going to be cutting our taking out from our checking account. Albert commissions check number 1532. So I'm gonna throw 20 and we're gonna subtract 56066. So therefore he 
are therefore my checking account has been reduced to six thousand three hundred and forty six dollars and ninety one cents okay right we already have a subsidiary ledger right we already did the commissions okay last but not least even Bob Mason decides to withdraw uh withdraw fifteen hundred dollars for his hard work earned money as well. So in this case, that is exactly the last thing we're going to do is a owner's withdrawal. Okay, owner's withdrawal. And he wants to take $1,500, okay? So again, if you remember the last time we did an owner's withdrawal, the most proper best way to do it is to write a check from the business checking account and he's going to go and deposit into his personal checking account. Okay, so owner's withdrawal, 32000 Okay. Owner's draw, 32000 for $1,500. And of course, like we said, it's going to come out of the checking, the business checking account. Okay, and let's cut him a check. Fifteen thirty-three for fifteen hundred dollars to Bob Mason, owners withdraw. Okay. So, check number 1533. Okay, we're going to write here, owner withdraw from company, from company bank. Okay, check number 1533. Okay. And then let's go ahead and update the ledger accounts, okay? We're updating our equity because he ended up taking his own money out. So therefore, owners withdraw once again for the 28th. Check number 1533. Journal 20 now for another $1,500. So therefore, he has taken out a grand total of $3,000 from his company, okay? And of course, you need to decrease the checking account once again because he took the money out from the business checking account, okay? So again, you could put owner, owner's draw, check number 1520, 1533. Okay, 20 for another $1,500. Okay, so therefore, taking out that $1,500 has decreased his checking account to $4,846.91. Okay, so save your ledger. Okay, because now the last thing that we have left to do is the trial balance for week four. So once again, I'm going to block this section off to go ahead and represent that this is going to be the um, uh, trial balance for week four. And then we'll take a break now.